announced by the Minister for Education, Rory Quinn, that the junior cert is being abolished and is being replaced with a new system. And some of the descriptions of the system, it says it's going to cover 24 statements of essential learning focused on communications, mathematical concepts, critical thinking, citizenship and sustainable values. We're joined by Dr. Anne Looney, who is Chief Executive of the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment. At first glance, Anne, it doesn't seem to be the clearest of new curriculums. What are the 24 statements of essential learning? Um, hi, Anton, how are you doing? The, the 24 statements of essential learning are a new way of describing what students do in junior cycle. Currently, um, your, your three years are marked by a set of subjects. So I do history, I do geography, I do maths. And you know, that's still going to be there. You'll still be doing history, you'll still be doing geography, you'll still be doing maths. But instead of focusing on covering the course, we're going to really try and pay attention to what students learn as a result of covering the course. So it may look like a superficial change, but actually in terms of what we're trying to achieve here in refocusing on, on a little bit more on, on the outcomes for students in junior cycle, I think it's, it's quite a big change. And I probably wouldn't say that the, the junior cert is being abolished because all over the country now there are students running around cheering and shouting at the thoughts that they're not going to have to do an exam. Come back in. That's not the case. They're still going to be um, an exam at the end of third year. The difference is that it won't, your marks won't all be awarded on the basis of what you do at the end of third year. Okay, well, can you explain a little bit about that? If there is to be an exam or if there is to be ongoing marking on the way up to that third year, yeah. how do you mark something as nebulous as citizenship and sustainable values? Okay, you, if you were taking a course in sustainable values or in citizenship, and remember we do already have a course in civic, social and political education, there's a specification for the course. It's detailed as are the learning outcomes and what you're assessing students against are the learning outcomes of the course. So you can, you can, uh, some of the new components that are listed are things like sustainable living, but they're just examples. There will still be the traditional subjects. We now have an opportunity to look at the work schools are already doing in developing new languages at junior cycle and including those because currently it was subjects or nothing. And the only way you could improve your junior cycle was add more subjects. So we have kids taking up to 13 and 14 subjects in the junior search examination and research evidence was telling us that was just it was just too much, too wide and not deep enough. And this is about creating space for a bit more uh, for deep learning. But remember, it's very important for the nation's kids that they, there'll still be an exam, <laughs> but it, the marks won't all be at the end. Okay, that's the 24 statements of essential learning. Throughout them, if I have this right, there are then six key skills, which are managing myself, staying well, communications, being creative, working with others, managing information, and thinking. Okay, so let's take it you're doing a subject like English. You'll be doing literature, you'll be doing poetry, you'll be doing, doing communication, all the things that you, you, you would do in English. But you're also going to, through your study of English, try and focus on developing these skills that were identified by young people as important for uh, successful learning and for successful success in business, success in college and success in living. And you've listed them there. And they're, they're actually described in terms that any 12 or 13 year old can understand. And if you're a parent of a 12 and 13 year old, take a good look at them and say, yeah, managing myself, uh, learning to communicate, learning to think, um, coping with, uh, with um, be, being well and keeping well are all things that we would like our, our young people to develop. Well, so it's, it's all about doing those two subjects. How do you apply staying well? to English. How do I look at Macbeth in a way that makes me healthy? Um, well, I keep, keep away from daggers. I suppose it's an important lesson on Halloween. I think it's about ensuring that you're, let, let's take something like mental health and well-being, which we, we know is a concern that everybody has about young people. And the traditional response has been, oh, teacher, put it on the curriculum, put, a, put something on the curriculum, teach them a module. But actually, if you pay attention to it in every subject. So in the teaching of English, if you're, if you're, if you're focused on how well you're doing, how well you're learning, if you have opportunities to discuss, to communicate, to make mistakes, to get things wrong, in discussing the characters of Macbeth, you're getting good feedback and you're learning to learn from your mistakes and you have an opportunity to talk about how well you're doing in the classroom, that's important and I think if you've less focus on the exam and less
successful combat stress at the end of third year, I think that's that's also uh, that's also a benefit. The success or failure of all of this, of course, is going to lie with the teachers. Peter McMenamin is with us, who is the general secretary of the TUI. Peter, is this going to require your members to take on a whole load of new work? Well, that's a very interesting question, I'm told. Um, I mean, we've obviously listened with a great deal of interest to what the Minister has said uh, today and looked at his, uh, his script, and indeed I was listening to what Anne was saying there earlier, and uh, certainly there are a number of clarifications uh, that I think it's important uh, that should go out, in, particularly in respect of the examination and the fact that the, there is still going to be a, you know, a junior certificate. I think these are, it is reassuring to hear some of these things, um, and indeed, I mean, there has been a lot of confusion in schools uh, and uh, a lot of members have been wondering what is to happen in the future. And in particular, the, uh, the, the suggestion that was made in the past that there will be a curtailment, a curtailment to eight subjects introduced uh, in the very near future. Now, it is welcome the fact that the, uh, the Minister has found space for these things to be phased in uh, over the next uh, number of years. Uh, and that it's all part of the development of the junior, of the junior cycle. And what's uh, your union's or your members' reaction? Is it a positive welcoming of, of change, or is it resistance to to um, extra labour? Well, quite frankly, I mean, amongst the membership, there'll be a variety of different reactions. But as a union, uh, you know, we will uh, we will always welcome educational change, provided it is done for the right reason, i.e., for the provision of a better form of education for the young people. Uh, we would have a major difficulty if any change of this nature was introduced uh, you know, as a cost-saving measure if it was introduced just in order to uh, to save uh, some money, much as it's needed to, uh, to be done. Um, but I don't hear that in what the Minister has said and in terms of what Anne is saying. Uh, I mean, I do see, see this as being a genuinely progressive move. Uh, there will certainly be apprehensions amongst the membership and certainly the idea is that uh, some of the subjects might be curtailed or the choice of, uh, of students might be curtailed uh, was causing serious concern. Now, there has been a general a sigh of relief uh, from our members when uh, when that threat was uh, the, the, the imminence of that threat has certainly been lifted. But clearly, I mean, there, there is a number, a lot of examination in terms of what precisely is going to uh, be involved in this. You asked a number of very pertinent questions, I think, and there certainly there will be a lot of similar questions asked by our members as you know exactly how are we going to do this? How do we go, go about this? It is new, uh, as in as in all forms of life, uh, some people are going to love the challenge of doing something new and some people will be fearful of it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, we have a positive uh, w w disposition towards this, provided, as I say, it is done for educational reasons. But the major uh, the major point that we have been making uh, in respect of this has to do with the resources and whether and how this is going to be funded. And quite frankly, we've been, uh, we've been also saying, uh, you know, in the times of serious cutbacks uh, in education, which everybody has suffered, and the threat of further cutbacks, which are likely to occur uh, over the coming year or so, is this the top priority right now when there is a threat to taking teachers out of the classroom? Okay, well, I don't want to get too far down the road, Peter, but as you yourself say, that that's a, a separate issue. Absolutely. Okay. There is one question that is coming in a lot by text 53102, which is, for instance, like this, where is the IT course, and you might have an answer to this, where is the IT course for future knowledge economy? Where is the investment in um, uh, computer infrastructure and all of that stuff? Okay, um, in, in terms of one of the things that students told us in, in consulting about these changes, students told us very quickly that they wanted more opportunities to use technology in classrooms. And in, in recent times, there's been a, uh, an improvement in the provision of ICT in, of ICT in schools. There's something very exciting uh, on the cards for, for junior cycle, and that is the opportunity to use, um, to use technology to create a, a digital portfolio that students would be able to use to to store and upload their work in the course of um, in the course of um, let's take a subject like English again back to Macbeth like that, that they might be able to to um, take an essay that they had done in second year and decide that it was a really good piece of work on Macbeth and use that, put that into their portfolio, that would then count towards their final marks. Now that's, a, that's, a, that's a major innovation within the Irish education system. There is work to, if, if they're in a school that doesn't have broadband or that doesn't have much in the way of computers, so it's not we, a whole lot of good, so is it? It, which is why I think wisely we're, we're launching these proposals today, but we're clearly saying now we've got a very focused reason for um, making sure that schools have access to broadband and to what they need to enable this to happen. And also we have to try with schools because there are already schools that are using um, 
uh, technology like this, and I think we need we need to deploy it as well. We also want to give an opportunity for students to deploy some of their technologies um, in schools, and, and, and kids are already quite used to uploading and sharing, probably not in ways we'd always like them, but maybe we could harness some of that enthusiasm in the classroom. I also think that the the opportunities um, to um, to use um, to use technology to give students feedback, uh, to store items, and to develop this this approach to a digital portfolio uh, is something that we'd be able to work on with schools. Peter said, like, what happens next? That what happens next is we go to work with schools where we'd be working with members of the TUI, members of the, of the ASPI, in, uh, as schools begin to plan for the changes in 2012. And we come up right up against the obstacles, but I think we've all learned very quickly that we have to adopt a, a problem-solving um, attitude to things. And in fact, one of the things we're finding in engaging with schools is they're volunteering to step forward and, and engage with us in looking at how they plan for the um, future. That's where we're going to have to leave it. Do you want to say one more time just to those junior source students? One more time. Put away the fireworks. <laughs> stop the celebrations. There will actually, it's the current, it's the, it's the kids in fourth class who may be leaping around going, hooray, I won't have to do a junior search exam. And they're currently ridiculed being being, um, being given a hard time by their older brothers and sisters. Stop celebrating now. There will still be a junior search exam. Dr. Anne Looney, Chief Executive of the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment. And Peter McMenamin, General Secretary of the TUI. Thank you both very much. This is the last word with Matt Cooper on Today FM. Text 53102.